What's up, YouTube? This is your girl, Megan. Welcome back to the Hood Astro Queen to all of my returning subscribers. But if this is your first time on my page today, do yourself a solid and hit that subscribe button because you know you want to. Why not join the family? Okay, so before we get into today's video, I wanted to address a suggestion that I got on a recent video because I'm always taking suggestions. I am no better than anyone else. And the suggestion was to include real life, like a screen chat or like a um, screen record, I guess you could say, of these charts that I'm doing so that the viewers and my subscribers can actually go over the charts with me in real time and it can be less boring that way. And to that suggestion, I want to say yes. Okay, first off, I do want to take your uh, advice because I think that's a great idea however okay the way my coins are set up I do not have that futuristic boom bap uh future mama technology at my disposal right now so I'm literally working with what God has given me currently so until further notice which that is something I plan to do in the future to do like you know screen records and you guys can follow along and I can be super interactive with you guys um, so until I can do that monetarily wise, y'all just gonna have to enjoy this podcast style, baby. Okay. And hopefully that's why I try to keep it semi entertaining for you guys. I throw the little pictures up there, but let's just pretend this is a podcast like in your mind. Let's use our imaginations, our thinkers. So today I wanted to talk about the breakup of Joe Budden and Sin Santana. The two are a couple from Love & Hip Hop New York that have been together for some time now. However, reports have surfaced that the two have been broken up, I mean, as recently as like four months ago. So I wanted to address that because I wanted to put my two cents in, in a cosmic kind of way. Y'all know how we do over here. And when I looked up, you know, their charts individually, and I mean, both together, just from a synastry perspective, I saw some very interesting things, okay, that I want to get into. So starting with Joe, he was born on August 31st, 1980 in New York. And this makes him a Virgo sun, Taurus moon. Now, with him being a Virgo sun, I kind of saw this just off bat by the way that he acts, you know, just outwardly especially with his Mercury being conjoined to his son. Um, first of all, uh, Mercury is exalted in Virgo, okay? And it loves to function in Virgo. It works super well there. And as a result, these can be some of the most communicative, very intelligent people, uh, Virgo sons, no less. You know, these people are, I've never met a, a stupid Virgo, and I always say this, you know, even if they aren't traditionally educated, they might even be self-taught. They have a great way of speaking, especially writing, you know, with him being a, a former rapper and all, because Virgo does govern the hands, specifically the fingers, right? So I can I can see that, how he has that thing going for him. But then with him being so, uh, what's the word? He does come off. It's the type of person who likes to like intellectually bully people. You know, he plays these little mind games, especially if he's engaging in a conversation with somebody who is not really that mentally astute. Um, he could come off as somebody who is very much um, condescending, you know, and he's super logical. That's very much that Mercury energy, super logical. And he likes to try and play these mind games with people. To where it's like, you know, intellectually, I am your father. I am superior in a way. Like, he doesn't say it, but you kind of get the vibe, you know. Um, and that's very much Virgo energy, especially Virgo Mercury energy as well. And then with his appearance, he's very clean cut. Uh, he, he, he has this, like, chic hobo uh, style of dress that he tends to wear very much um a Virgo male kind of thing but then getting to his his Taurus his uh moon being in Taurus Taurus is the sign of the conformist okay Taurus is very much the trendsetter 
Uh, they these people set the bar, set the standards for things. They can be very much traditionalist. They're all about the status quo, which was very um, interesting as it pertains to his marriage or whatever the fuck he had with Sin Santana. Because one of the biggest issues that they had was the fact that he felt like things should have been done a certain way. He clearly is one of those men who feel like women or the wives or girlfriends should play a certain role within the family dynamic and the male should play a different role. And that's very much Taurus, right? That traditionalism. Women have their place, you know, as a woman, you should be committed to your family and at home. And as a man, I should be whoop, the whoop, the whoop. That's very much Taurus male. Um, and then also with him being super uh, plugged in into the music industry and all about politics. He's all about playing the politics of the music industry, the status quo, you know, fitting into the system as they as things are right now. Um, so that's that's very fitting. And I definitely get that from him also. Um, his Jupiter and Saturn are also on Virgo. So he, he has a lot of Virgo energy. With his Jupiter in the 18th degree of Virgo, that 18th degree, he actually has the number 18 in his chart a lot, which is very interesting. It's a very challenging number because it can deal with the person who is, it, it's, it's twofold. So it could be a person who experiences a lot of, um, people around them that are like toxic, you know, um, a lot of obstruction and upheavals by way of other people who have very flawed character traits, or you can be that person, right? It can create a person who is that way, who has some very nasty character traits. Um, very, I mean, we're all flawed individuals, but this can make a narcissist. It can make somebody who is, um, above reproach. It can make somebody who's very much materialistic. And to the narcissism point, I think Joe is a high functioning narcissist very much. And that's just Megan's personal opinion. But, you know, seeing this 18 all over the place in his chart really doesn't help. It it doesn't help. (laughs) So there's that. And then with his Chiron actually being conjoined to his moon and Taurus, this can deal with Joe really feeling like um, jealous and possessive over his women. This could deal with him being the breadwinner for the women in his life, which I believe he was with San Santana, especially after his podcast career started taking off. Uh, It could create a man who is very much stubborn. And like I said, that primal kind of caveman mentality towards women, feeling like they own women or their women and just very resistant to um, deviating from like their views. You know what I mean? Uh, very stubborn and set in their ways. And especially, like I said, just towards women with this being in his moon. His son is also squaring Neptune, which deals with his drug abuse or his history of drug abuse. And then going back to the surplus of Virgo energy in his chart, this stellium can absolutely deal with him having mental illness or suffering from some type of mental illness of some sort as that Mercury tends to just, even in Gemini's, it can wreak havoc on a person's brain. So it can cause a host of mental illnesses in an individual. So I can see that. That's, that makes sense. Now, Joe is an Aquarius South Node, which makes him a Leo North Node. Uh, And his North Node is at the 18th degree of Leo. So there's that 18 again. Um, And with it being in Leo, this definitely makes him a narcissist, like, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, like, I'm certain. Um, his Aquarius South Node, though, very interesting. Aquarius South Node people tend to be, um, they tend to come into this lifetime being very much about self, uh, which is interesting because a lot of people, a lot of astrologers do refer to, like, um, Aquarius as being, like, the community, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, the water bearers. And and they are, it is the sign of activism, one of the signs of activism. And in that respect, Aquarius South Note people can be very much loyal to a cause. 
but they're not loyal to people on an individual level. These people can be very much about self. Okay. And it can cause them in some of the worst case scenarios, like on the lower vibrational level to be very much, um, disloyal, disingenuous, um, emotionally aloof, standoffish, disconnected from other people, like intentionally, you know, very fake. And something that I found interesting is that since Saturn uh, is at the 11th degree of Aquarius, so it's conjoined to Joe's South Node. And in synastry, this can create somebody, it, it can create a relationship that's filled with a lot of like obligation, uh, baggage. So it's likely that Joe probably looked at the relationship as like a lot of hard work. You know, the obvious interpretation is that this, you know, Joe served as some sort of a father figure to send because that's that Saturn energy too. It's very much about older people. Um, it's very masculine, right? So it's like older men, whatever, uh, fathers, So he could have absolutely been a father figure to her. But also this could have signified there being a sense of um, obligation, you know, especially with that Aquarian energy. It's all about Leo is I love you. Right. But Aquarius is I'll tolerate you. Okay, I'll deal with your ass. So he probably dealt with her out of sense of, you know, especially since they have a, a son together. So like obligation duty trying to do the right thing right but the relationship took on um this theme of like that that it required a lot of hard work and probably a lot of a lot more work than joe was willing to commit to it you know what i mean but then also it's very poignant uh, with him being an aquarius south note and conjoined to her saturn because a lot of times Saturn points towards like our fears, um, delays, restrictions, things that take time, things that we have issues with, challenges. And Saturn is also, it creates a sense of, like I said, emotional detachment that could absolutely point towards him being very much insensitive to her, aloof to her emotional needs and concerns. But like, even when she was dealing with depression, you know, um, I remember that episode on Love and Hip Hop where she's literally like pouring her heart out to Joe and he's like, yeah, so like, and he just came off as very apathetic, very insensitive. All of that can be seen with this aspect here. Okay. But getting right into sin, uh, she was born on October 20th, 1992 in the Bronx, New York. I can't stand these Bronx bitches. I just can't. I can't. It's something about females from the Bronx that really get under my skin, like celebrity wise. Maybe if, you know, if you're from the Bronx and you're listening to this, you cool. But a lot of them really aggravate me. So this makes her a Libra son, Leo Moon. And her being a Leo son, or excuse me, a Libra son is fitting because Libra women tend to be very much like, relationship hoarders uh they jump from one relationship to another and they can very much be a part of like a lot of codependent relationships and they take a lot of shit off of their men uh, in the name of just being a part of a relationship libra is the natural ruler of the seventh house in the zodiac so a lot of times these people their self-esteem and their ego rests on their ability to be seen you know um through other people you know what I mean uh they develop their confidence through other people and through their relationships and things like that so um yeah as a result these women can just Libra women can find themselves in all kinds of relationships that are just hella unhealthy and just bizarre and and crazy so there's that her Juno is conjoined to her Mars um which is at the 18th degree of cancer. And there goes that number 18 again. And in a woman's chart, Mars does represent, I mean, it could represent her husband, the type of men that she attracts in her life. So this could point toward sin attracting men who are naturally very much narcissistic. She's always going to have a hard time as it pertains to just the men that she dates 
They could be moody, whiny, cheap. I wouldn't be surprised if Joe was cheap. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, And self-absorbed very much. Um, Yeah, and just fickle and moody and can even be the type to... If they're not, if, like they're either looking for a woman to be their mother or they're looking to parent their partner. So men who look to like be her dad and shit, which once again is very poignant to the issues that were going on in their relationship because one of the major themes was Joe being, you know, an older guy wanting to settle down and live like this happily ever after, um, I guess type of life and with sin being so young she still wanted to party she still wanted to get out there and you know have fun and I even believe he said something about like he blasted her for being messy and leaving her clothes everywhere and stuff like that that's that cancer energy in her chart um cancer does make a person like cancer is a very messy sign you know what I mean so um yeah, like that explains him putting on her on blast or nagging her. He could be the type to nag her about, you know, are you cleaning up? Are you doing this? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you blah, 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 blah. So she's naturally, even outside of Joe, she's just going to attract that type of man in general. But interestingly enough, Joe's Venus is at the 22nd degree of cancer. And, you know, in a man's chart, Venus uh, represents women, right? The woman that he attracts, the woman that he can marry. And that 22... Uh, or the 22nd degree deals with situations where you're either controlling other people or you're controlling a situation or you're being controlled. So this could absolutely reinforce the idea of Joe wanting to be like a father figure to the women that he dates. Cause he's, I mean, no stranger, stranger to dating younger women, you know, youthful women, naive women, but then also him wanting to control these women. And with his Venus being conjoined to, her Mars and, and her Juno, I'm pretty sure that in the beginning of the relationship, because this aspect in sinistry can create like a hot sexual kind of relationship thing going on, you know. So perhaps in the beginning of their relationship, when they were actually having sex, it was probably spicy. But over time, it created a situation to where Joe's um, real or his true colors really like shine through, you know, his desire to really take a woman and uh, make her into like the quintessential housewife or you know make her into what he wanted what he thought an idea of a woman should be or just over police and just kind of over pick because that's cancer energy too very much nitpicky right this aspect can also produce a love-hate relationship so a type of relationship to where you know, the couple one minute is very much like in love and happy go lucky and super emotionally connected one minute, but then the next like at each other's throats. And then also not for nothing, cancer does rule family. So this aspect can produce or it explains them to uh, coming together to start a family you know, with one another, because family is clearly something that's very important to the both of them. But I would not be surprised, actually, with Joe's um, Venus being at the 22nd degree. I would not be surprised if he actually trapped sin or felt like her having his baby or starting a family with her. Like if he uh, didn't use that as leverage to control her. Do you see what I'm saying? Like hanging over her head, the fact that she's a mom or saddling her up with all these like responsibilities and what you think a mom should be and a wife should be and these obligations and probably even feeling like okay once I put a baby in her and she has this kid she's gonna act right and and give me what I want from her type of thing um yeah this aspect could definitely produce that y'all have to excuse the rain on my window so that little noise you hear in the background that's that's rain but Um, This is actually cemented with the fact that his Venus is trining her Pluto because this could absolutely create a situation because Pluto is all about manipulation, especially with her Pluto in its home sign of Scorpio. It's about manipulation. It's about uh, intensity. So this could bring about a very intense relationship, a very drama filled relationship. 
And to be honest with you, I wouldn't even rule out abuse. You know what I'm saying? Um, particularly emotional abuse with uh, his Venus at the 22nd degree of cancer. I also meant to add in the beginning of the video that because Joe is a Virgo, he's naturally going to be a person that is fault finding. Virgo is very hypercritical. And that's because nine times out of 10, these people are very critical of self. So a lot of times they can be put in situations to where they're surrounded by people, but it's like they can't really enjoy their relationships because nothing is ever good enough to them. You know, nothing anybody does is ever good enough. Nothing anyone says is ever good enough. You know, they can pick apart their parents. They can pick apart their partners. These people can find anything wrong with anybody, okay? And they they pay particularly close attention to detail. So that explains a lot, too, in the sense that Joe had all of these, like, you know, criticisms about sin and what she did and what she didn't do and what she wanted to do. That explains a lot also. Now, with Joe's Black Moon Lilith being at the 16th degree of Libra, uh, the number 16 does deal with, like, catastrophe. It deals with disaster. And, I mean, this absolutely points towards him having very just disastrous relationships with women and even creating enemies as that seventh house is the natural house of open enemies creating enemies out of his partners former spouses just having a very much like negative relationship um, with women that he used to be with and with it forming or it's squaring her mars i mean i honestly wouldn't be surprised if sin uh took him through the ringer as far as like uh, child support is concerned or them going over like a like a custody battle or things of that nature like to share custody of that little boy sin is going to take him through it okay um yeah or 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 he could be on the other side of it and be kind of like litigation happy himself but i do see a court battle ensuing so mark my words now, since Black Moon Lilith is at the zero degree of Pisces and is forming a trine to Joe Budden's um, Mars, which is at the what first degree of Scorpio. Now, this can deal with sin kind of like being a victim in the relationship, but allowing herself to be one, if that makes sense, like passively participating in um her being victimized in the relationship and you know there could be this underlying theme especially with her black moon Lilith and Pisces of like her being used to being a victim in her relationships or in her you know uh amongst men but then this also this theme of like um even isolation like I wouldn't even be surprised if he isolated her or you know kept her in a state of not literal imprisonment but like um kind of you know made her feel kind of like cut off from the world and whatever and whatnot emotionally but she allowed herself to play that role like sacrificing herself sacrificing what she wanted in order to be a part of what he had going on or what he wanted for her and with joe's mars conjoined to sin son I mean, it just kind of reinforces this theme between the two of there not being much long term longevity or sustainability in their relationship as this aspect in sinistry can produce a very hot and heavy physical connection initially, but kind of wanes over time as the two you know, people in the relationship can be lost in arguments, petty arguments, especially on Joe's. Uh, behalf or the Mars individual that can be very combative, very defensive, very petty. Um, and they can even get into arguments like, you know, like, uh, and wonder like, oh, wow, what did I see in this person? Like, why am I with this person kind of thing? And it could just produce like a very messy, you know, a messy relationship. And then finally, um, Joe's Uranus is conjoined to sins Pluto and this aspect in sinistry is all about 
change. You know, it's all about a need to redefine the relationship. And especially with um, both planets being in the sign of Scorpio, Scorpio is all about death, um, rebirth and transformation. But it's likely that there was a shift in the power dynamic over time in that relationship and as well as a shift in their resources and um, the money, which makes sense because when they first got together, Joe didn't have his newfound podcast and, you know, that type of career going for himself. So there could have been very much a change in um, the the finances, the way the finances were, were um, managed, but then also a shift in sexual, like the sexual activity, which obviously is one of the issues that sin was very public about on love and hip hop and this aspect is one of those aspects especially the conjunct because a conjunction can be experienced as like um you know a square like a harsh aspect or a positive aspect it just depends but it's conjunctions are very strongly felt and a lot of relationships actually don't survive like there's uranus um pluto you know, aspect, like if it's harsh on the more harsher sides. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's all about reinventing the relationship, reinventing your idea of individuality, um, which obviously was an issue for them. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was, you know, um, played into, uh, like a play a major role in the reason why they're no longer together. So yeah, I'm just going to stop right there. So that concludes my video on Sin and Joe. I I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm going to just stop there. And um, yeah, y'all drop down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of this reading, as well as any suggestions you may have for the future. Be sure to practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until next time, I'll holla.